Today we're here to talk about why Rise of Kingdoms is still the best kingdom builder on mobile. So for those that don't know, years ago, Rise of Kingdoms started out as Rise of Civilizations. Since then, they changed their name to Rise of Kingdoms because, well, there were reasons. Whatever those reasons may be. It's been brought to us by Lilith Games, who's done a lot of games in the mobile gaming space and has seen a lot of success. But in my opinion, Rise of Kingdoms is probably one of the most successful and one of the top grossing games out of all the ones that they've put together. Now previously, maybe a year ago at this point, I put out a video called Why I Quit Rise of Kingdoms. And this is true. Now that video was not me downing Rise of Kingdoms because I do think it's the best kingdom builder of all kingdom builders. It was more talking about why the kingdom builder game style, the genre itself, doesn't fit into my lifestyle. Kingdom builders take a ton of your time, and not only a ton of your time, but they take time in sp at specific times. So say at 10 o'clock p.m., I may have to log on with my alliance and do an activity with those people, right? That's part of the reason. When you have to be on such a tight schedule in your gaming world, it can be difficult for people with a lot of things going on in their life hence myself. So that was the main reason behind that video. If you want to go check it out, you should go do that. Now, even with me quitting, many, many people are still playing the game with thousands of new players every single day, diving into the game for the first time ever. Now, there's other games in the genre as well, ones that I've played and ones that I really enjoy, but there's reasons why Rise of Kingdoms is the best. Now, some of these other games include State of Survival, Puzzles in Survival, Top War, Last Fortress, uh, even one called Infinity Kingdom. Now, all of these games are pretty good. Some of them are kind of gimmicky, where they give you something and then it leads you into a war-style game without you knowing it until you invest some time into the game. But others are done very well. But the question is, why are they just not as good as Rise of Kingdoms? State of Survival, for example, it's a zombie world. Maybe you like zombies more than you like the whole historical theme behind Rise of Kingdoms. Or in Infinity Kingdom, maybe you like being able to have pet dragons as well, which was one of my favorite features inside of the game. Or maybe in Puzzles and Survival, you like doing puzzles along with your kingdom builder. I don't know, but there's a reason why all of these games just don't stack up to Rise of Kingdoms. So let's start out with the first reason, that is originality. Rise of Kingdoms was one of the earlier kingdom builders brought to mobile. Not the first one, but one of the earlier ones, and they didn't base their game off of other games, other game success, and try and build around that. Lilith Games, they built a game that they felt would be very successful in the kingdom builder space, a game that they would want to play with a lot of depth and customization inside of the game. A lot of the games that we see coming out right now in the kingdom builder space kind of look at other successful kingdom builders, such as Rise of Kingdoms, and they take a lot of the mechanics from that game and implement it into their own game, oftentimes not bring anything new to the space, besides a different look, different music, different feel overall. But essentially, it's very similar to a Rise of Kingdoms, but oftentimes it's not even as good because it lacks certain mechanics that Rise of Kingdoms still has. Now, yes, I know Rise of Kingdoms and all kingdom builders seem to have the worst advertisements where they show gameplay that's not even in the game. Now, unfortunately, this is kind of normal for the genre and we've become accustomed to it. So we have to know that what we see is not exactly what we're gonna get, but the gameplay behind it is very good. Now, because Rise of Kingdoms is one of the most popular, it has a massive community. I still have people joining my Discord server every single day asking me about Rise of Kingdoms, which is a game I haven't put videos out in in years. And little note here, I used to be sponsored by Rise of Kingdoms when the game released, when it was Rise of Civilizations back in the day. And I was sponsored by them for two years, putting videos out every single day. Those videos are still bringing new people to the community that are joining every single day. Speaking of community, the gameplay you're seeing in the background is courtesy of my very good friend, Chiskool. Now, if you don't know this man and you're in interested in playing Rise of Kingdoms, he is the YouTuber that you need to subscribe to for Rise of Kingdoms because every single day he's bringing you guys the best 
top level breakdown videos and wars and everything that you would want to see in Rise of Kingdoms, Chiss School has for you. Why don't you go ahead, subscribe to his channel. I'll be linking it in the description of this video. And uh, again, thank you Chiss School for having this footage sent my way. Now, when you start out Rise of Kingdoms, you get yourself a nice little base, a base that reminds a lot of people of the beginning stages of Clash of Clans. Actually, you'll get a lot of people coming over from Clash of Clans to play Rise of Kingdoms, and they use a lot of the terminology interchangeably, which is actually not correct, but you know, you could tell when someone came from Clash. And that gameplay, that upgrade sequence that you do for your base in Rise of Kingdoms, is very addictive. It's very fun. You upgrade your base. It's very rewarding. You start training new troops. You get to upgrade them. It's just a really rewarding gameplay for people that are into this type of a game, that are into the grind, that were into Clash of Clans, which is one of the most popular mobile games of all time. It converts over well, but this is only a very beginning part of the game. But Rise of Kingdoms does a nice job in the beginning to really have you enjoy that experience. Maybe for the first week or so, you're upgrading your base, you're all happy, and you're kind of exploring the world, attacking barbarians, and figuring out what the game is all about. So you kind of get sucked into the game in the beginning because it's just so fun, even with the early stages. Then at some point, you will realize that you could be attacked by other people, and the things that you've spent so much time upgrading, training, and building can be destroyed. Your wall will go on fire. You'll freak out because you don't know how to handle it, but you will learn. You'll find YouTube videos and guides that teach you how to do this, and you'll meet people from inside of the community in Rise of Kingdoms that are there to help. Now, speaking of community, one of the most important things inside of Rise of Kingdoms is that you hook up with an alliance as soon as you can, because once your beginner shields are gone, you're open for attack. And if you start hoarding a bunch of resources, some of the big boys, they're gonna find you and they're gonna start stealing your stuff. So hook up with an alliance because Rise of Kingdoms is not a solo play game. It's a game that you have to play with other people, which is another part of community that is amazing. You can make so many friends literally from around the world that you could play with, hang out with, join their Discord servers for their community and for their alliance and meet people that you would have never met before. I have met so many friends from Kingdom Builders overall, specifically Rise of Kingdoms, and those are people that I'm gonna be friends with forever. So that's something that Rise of Kingdoms has that it really does it better than any other Kingdom Builder as well, and that's community. Now there is another Kingdom Builder that's coming to the scene soon that I think could be a competitor to Rise of Kingdoms that I think is really gonna do it right. I'm gonna share that one with you later in the video. Now guys, if you're enjoying the video, make sure you subscribe because on this channel, I bring you lists and guides of the best games that you should be playing. Sometimes you are looking at your phone, you don't know what to do, you don't know what to play. So you can come to my channel and I'll give you all of the newest stuff that you need to take a look at so you can have a good fun experience while you're gaming on your phone. Something that Rise of Kingdoms has that no other kingdom builder has on mobile to this day is open world movement. And this is probably the largest reason why the game is so successful. Now, what does open world movement mean? Let me tell you what it's not. In other games, in kingdom builder space on mobile, you'll send your troops, you'll send your commanders out to go do a task. And on the way, they may be starting to get attacked by someone. You can't attack back. You can't do anything besides the task that you went out to do. There's no changing what you're going to do. There's no calling an audible saying, stop collecting from here and start fighting this person or run away. You know, you're kind of stuck with the task that you put in to do. Now in Rise of Kingdoms, you have complete freedom. You could take your commanders and all your troops out into the world, park them somewhere, and then you can do whatever you want from there. You can go hide in a cornfield, wait for people to come past you and attack them. I don't know if that's a good idea. You may start a war, but that's something that you could do. Point is in Rise of Kingdoms, your in the world movement is completely free. It's not obstructed by a system that doesn't have the mechanic in place to make movements, to make changes. That in my opinion, is the biggest reason why Rise of Kingdoms has been as successful as it is. Open world movement is completely incredible and it allows for you to have that feel that you're actually playing the game and not just sending people here, sending people there and having things done for you. You're actually more involved in the action that's going on in the battles and in really whatever it is you decide to do in the open world. 
Now also the unlock system inside of the game of Commanders is really fun and rewarding. The chess system works. It's an addicting feel that you get. Not an addicting feel to the point where you're gonna like start spending tons of money because you want to open more chests, but it's rewarding when you unlock a legendary commander that you've been waiting for. If you're looking to get Caesar, you unlock him and then bam, you eventually get him. It's a good feeling. Upgrading these commanders over time, well, can take some time, but the commanders look great. They all have different abilities. You could take these commanders and build them out in a way where you're gonna make them the most effective that they can be, where they're out there doing some farming, where they're out there doing some gathering, whether they're out there going into battle. You make these builds custom to the way that you want them to be, which could be different than everyone else, or copy the same. Now inside of the game, there are multiple servers, hundreds of servers, maybe even thousands of servers at this time. And if you're on one server, you can't be in alliance with a friend of yours who's on another server. But Rise of Kingdoms has this covered. You can do server transfers where you can move from one server to the other. You could start a brand new alliance in a brand new server that's coming. They call these jumper groups where people are gonna organize groups of hundreds of people prepared to day one hit a brand new server and populate it be as strong as they can, as quickly as they can, to try and gain an advantage over everyone else in the server so they can be dominant inside of that server. But not only do we have multiple servers and the ability to change between them, but we have server versus server. And this is where the esports element of the game comes into play. In server versus server, you, not only are you fighting against your people in your server for who's the strongest, but in server versus server, you now have to Combine. You have to work together with everyone in your server to battle people from another server. I love this element of the game because it makes it so that you're not just fighting against people in your server, but you actually have to work together with them as well to fight people in other servers. When Rise of Kingdoms brought this to the game, it was a huge, it was a massive change and positive change for the game overall, for the competitive players, for the grinders, and for people that were kind of looking to get some type of an esports feel inside of Rise of Kingdoms. Now it's not esports the way we think of it like Overwatch, but it definitely is a competitive thing that you do with your server where you can kind of wear the badge of honor that your server was the strongest and that you helped put that together and help build that. And earlier in the video, I talked about time involved, how for me, the time that it took, not only for the grind, because I enjoyed that, but more for the events and the activities that you had to do with your alliance, how it didn't fit my lifestyle, well, for a lot of people, this does fit their lifestyle. They're looking for a game that they could spend hours in in a day and have these commitments and requirements, and that's what they're looking for in gaming. So if you're one of those people, Rise of Kingdoms and actually Kingdom Builders in general do that very well, and this could very well be a genre for you. And over time, Rise of Kingdoms has had continuous updates, new commanders, new resources inside of the game. So many new things are continuously coming to the game, giving you something to grind for so you're not just like, okay, I'm maxed, I'm done, there's nothing more to do. There's always going to be more coming. Rise of Kingdoms and Lilith are doing a nice job continuously updating the game, keeping it fresh, keeping in touch with the community, and making it a viable game, one that's just not gonna die tomorrow. Now, I mentioned earlier there is a game, a competitor that is coming out. I'm about to share that with you because it's actually a game from Lilith Games as well. So Lilith is making another Kingdom Builder, which has all of the really great mechanics that everyone loves from Rise of Kingdoms and is taking those mechanics and putting them into Call of Dragons. Call of Dragons set to release in just about two months. I think it's in March of 2023 and it looks really good. It has all of the free movement that we spoke of from Rise of Kingdoms, and it brings different attack mechanics. So you could have different strategies for when you're attacking. There's air assault inside of this game as well, which is something we don't have in Rise of Kingdoms. But like I mentioned, Rise of Kingdoms right now is still the number one, the king of kingdom builders on mobile. Call of Dragons could be a competitor. It could come in and take that throne and start to become one of the strongest kingdom builders inside of the mobile space but that's yet to be seen. We've thought other games were gonna come in and knock Rise of Kingdoms off the pedestal, but that has not happened. Rise of Kingdoms has remained number one, and I think that Call of Dragons, even though it has a lot of the mechanics that Rise of Kingdoms already has, has an uphill battle to dethrone this beast, because right now, Rise of Kingdoms owns the Kingdom Builder space. With so many people invested with so much of their money and time into the game, I don't know if I see them moving on to something new. Time will tell, and we'll find out if Call of Dragons will take that throne, but today, Rise of Kingdoms is the number one kingdom builder.